The Ides of March reminds us that those in power will always seek more power unless and until citizens say stop. And do those crises not justify removing our rights? Remember that when the 2024 election rolls around, remember these three words, sick, semper, tyrannis. Well, now let's bring in the governor of South Dakota herself, Governor Christy Nome. Thank you for joining us, Governor Nome. And a lot to talk about, my friend. First of all, we, we just talked about this monologue of Joe Biden giving an interview to Comedy Central, appropriately, uh, but basically saying that the federal government, under his watch, will now guarantee children children's rights to transgender surgeries because he says anything less than that would be sinful. What are your thoughts on that one? Well, here in South Dakota this year, uh, we signed into law a bill that would not allow children under the age of 18 to have those kinds of dangerous uh, surgeries that would be permanent and irreversible. So we're very concerned about our children's future and making sure that obviously they have uh, the resources that they need when they have medical issues, but these kinds of procedures that are being pursued in other parts of the country uh, cannot be undone, Eric. And they're uh, extremely challenging for children under the age of 18, especially, and need to be something that's gone into, um, boy, with a lot of caution. You know, I, it's just it's scary because we're talking about tyranny. You know, mm -hmm. we're talking, you mm -hmm. know, coincidentally on the Ides of March when Julius Caesar was taken out by conspirators who thought he was being coming too tyrannical. But then the federal government saying that it was the Fed's job, not the states. And, and this is what bothers me as a, as a libertarian, as a constitutionalist. Mm -hmm. People like you who are great governors of very free states it seems to be like they're going to put pressure on you not to go forward with the legislation that you like. And, you know, again, there's this whole debate whether, you know, marijuana is a good example where it's illegal federally, but in certain mm -hmm. states it's not. Will you push back against the feds? It seems like that's all I do these days, Eric. I'm constantly having to sue the federal government for not upholding law when they're supposed to, such as on the southern border, or when they're um, taking excessive actions against states and punishing them for things that they're doing to defend the rights of their citizens. Uh, even this week, I vetoed a bill that had to do with updates to the UCC code. It was guidelines that they said were just federal government regulations that needed to be updated. But when we dug into that bill that was over 110 pages long, we saw that they redefined currency, uh, that they changed what money could be when it comes to terms of digital currency. And it essentially would pave the way for CBDC a central bank digitized uh, currency that would be something that would be run by the federal government while it excluded any other forms. Uh, so this is what this government is doing under the watch of Joe Biden. They're grabbing more control of people's lives, taking away their freedoms, trying to control their assets. And then even with what we saw credit card companies and other banks do as far as tracking potential purchases of guns, uh, we know that they may not, even if they don't approve of what you're purchasing, allow you to use your own resources to purchase it in the future with some of these overbearing actions that they're taking. Amazing that you bring that up, because with the, the failure of the Silicon Valley Bank and, and the other one or two institutions that they had to I guess backstop, not bail out, but backstop. Yeah, it, it's amazing that they, they're kind of sneaking in and trying to get into that mm -hmm. digital currency world where, where the government actually uh, has control over the digital currency as opposed to the Bitcoins and the Ethereums and, and, you know, the Dogecoins and the others where the government stay. And that was the, the attractiveness of a digital currency that the government couldn't get their dirty little mm -hmm. paws on it. But Biden administration, they have no bounds. They don't seem to care. They just want control of everything. You know, what's, what's interesting, Eric, is there's a bill much like this that's being proposed in about 20 other states. I was the first one to veto it to actually stop this legislation. Uh, it is being sold in all these other states as just an update to federal guidelines. No big deal. Governor just signed it into law. There's nothing alarming about it. But if you get to that one section of the bill, uh, it redefines what currency is when it comes to digital currency, and it paves the way for a central bank digital currency that would be run by the federal government. And they, they it excludes wanted, um, it excludes others that had already been previously in existence. They want to redefine what a currency is. They want to redefine mm -hmm. what women are. Governor, just 
you know, we're, we're seeing, you know, Biden talk about trans surgeries being protected on the federal level. Liberals can't tell you what a woman, the definition of a woman is. We have trans boxing matches where trans men are just le beating the living daylights out of, of biological women. United States powerlifting, saying that, according to their rules, men, biological men who identify as women trans will be allowed to powerlift against women. Where's the protection for women in America from coming from one of the most powerful, one of the most successful women in America, Governor Christy Noem? I really feel terrible for these young women that want to participate in that sport because it will be an unfair um, advantage that biological males will have from now on in that sport. So it is going to be challenging for women to rise to the top and to excel in many different areas because of just the biological differences. But Eric, this this tells you the importance of governors and tells you the importance of the role that we play every day in, in making sure we have strong legislation that passes, making sure that it's something that can withstand a court challenge. Every time we uh, look at a bill, it needs to be evaluated for will it be able to withstand a court challenge? And if it does, or if it has a flaw in it and it fails, the precedent that that sets. I think everybody that's trying to protect opportunity for young women right now when it comes to sports competitions is concerned about that decision that just came down from UA, USA you know, powerlifting. They're concerned about that because yeah. of the precedent and how that case could be used in determining other cases into the future. So we saw this discussion, gosh, almost two years ago now in South Dakota when we had a flawed girls sports bill that we fixed in that very day that the bill failed. I signed an executive order so that we would have the strongest bill in the nation uh, that I signed into law then. Made sure it was right so, so it could so withstand a court you, challenge. And therefore, now it is a, the example you, for the rest of the country on how you really protect I, girls' I, sports. I don't, I don't want to cut you off because this is an important question. It's, you're right. It, it matters because mm -hmm. the governor of a state is the CEO of the state. The, the governor mm -hmm. is the president of the state, which leads me to the next question. Governor Nome, is there any interest in... President Nome running for president. And no. let's be honest, I know you're not going to say it right here, but maybe you will eventually. But, he, but the, Ron DeSantis and, and Trump seem to be snipe. Well, Trump is sniping at DeSantis. The, this, mm -hmm. There's a going back and forth. But the governorship, governor of a state like South Dakota or Florida, this matters in, in, in going forward. What are your thoughts on Trump, DeSantis, mm -hmm. Nome? Weigh in. Well, there's a lot of people who want to run for president right now. I, th I think that anybody who gets up every day just dreaming of being president um, probably should never be president. Uh, that's not the kind of leader that we need right now. We need someone that really understands the importance of saving this country, that every day the Democratic Party gets up and tries to promote its socialism and Marxist agenda in this country, and that we need people who do the job because they really want to fix stuff. I would look at everybody that's running for president right now and not just listen to what they're saying. Go look at what they actually did. Listen, we lived through probably three or four years of, of, a, of kind of hell in this country, Eric, with what we saw shutting down from the pandemic, how the government just, you know, mandated closing of businesses, mandated vaccines, took away people's freedoms because the government told people they couldn't get together in gatherings, that people rolled over and gave up their freedom of assembly. Uh, they quit going to church. Those are all power grabs that were a little unprecedented in our times. And I think we should go to every one of those candidates and not just listen to what they're saying right now as they're a candidate for president. We should really look at what they did and what actions they took.